Okay, we're going to talk about frequency polygons, and here's an example of a frequency polygon. You'll notice that it's a, a graph connected with dots and lines. It starts at zero for the vertical and ends at zero on the vertical. So it is a connected kind of graph that shows the shape of a distribution. It's kind of similar to a histogram showing a shape, but this actually is with lines and dots. So we want to make one of these in StatCrunch from pure data. I just pulled up this data here in StatCrunch. It's not anything meaningful. It just says the card details of 2019. And there's a lot of different things I have on here. Yes, no's, and then some numbers. What I was interested in, I thought, well, let's look at the menu, the lowest MSRP, right? Okay, so I have all this data. And I, I want to see basically what's the lowest and highest. So I'm going to sort the table with ascending. All right, 13,000 all the way to 113,000. Okay, and you can see what they are, of course, what's the most expensive, right? They're the names, the Porsche 911. Okay, so these are the cars. They were alphabetized. You can re reorder it that way if you'd like, but I just kind of ordered it to kind of get an idea of where this was in case you had to make your own bins, maybe, or classes, they call them, but in StatCrunch it would be a bin. We need to bin this data because we need to create some classes for it. So here in StatCrunch we go to data and bin because we need to find these values down here. These values are the midpoints of the classes. Okay, To create a frequency polygon, these are the midpoints of the classes. And first we need the classes. And the classes are done by data and go down to bin. Now we're going to bin the, the lowest MSRP. I'm going to let it do automatically, but if you have fixed stuff, you might have a problem that says start at, say, 5,000 and go up by your class width, go up by 10,000, right? Something like that. But I'm going to do it automatically and just let it compute. It created a new column on the right called bin lowest and binned them, and it just made a started at zero and went to 20,000. So zero to, tw to 20,000 is my width, 20 to 40, etc. Okay, well now I need to count how many there are in there. How many of these are there? And how many of those are there? You can manually count it, but man, that's a lot of work. Why don't we just go to stat tables and get the frequency of this table? Okay, we're gonna the column that we want to find the frequency in is the bin column because it's gonna count how many there are of those, right? This is the numbers we're counting. This is our data now. It's kind of considered one, 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 one of those, one of those, right? Okay, we want the frequency of that, and we're fine with everything there, and we click done. Now this would be what you'd be given in a summary. Right? You've got your bins already, and you've got your frequencies, and so I've made a video on this. If you've got your summary, you're, you can easily create a frequency polygon. Well, we can still do the same here. I'm just going to copy this data, and I'm going to put it in right here, but I'm going to put it in one row down. Okay? Now I don't need that anymore. This is going to be, I'm going to label this as the MSRP. And I'm going to label this as the frequency. So now I'm working on this. Now, as I said before, the horizontal down here are the midpoints for a frequency polygon. We need to find the midpoints of our bins or the midpoints of our classes. Well, this is easy. It's 20,000. So 0 plus 20,000 divided by 2 is 10,000. So remember how to find that. You just take the first one plus the second one equals and then divide that sum by 2, 10,000. So my midpoint, I'm going to change this to midpoint now, is 10,000. And what was the width? The width of these is 20, right? So this goes up by 20. Or you could figure it out again. 20 plus 40 is 60 divided by 2 is 30 just goes up by 
20,000. I'd rather just add 20,000 to each of these, right? And there's probably uh, a formula in here to quickly do it, but I'm just going to do it manually since it's short. Add 20,000, add 20,000, add 20,000, add 20,000. Okay. Now, you'll notice on my frequency polygon, though, it starts at zero. The actual data was here, starting here, okay? Down here at zero for the X for the Y values, it's zero. So we don't have a starting at zero on my Y, right? My Y values right here, my frequency goes up to 18 and comes down to one. So we need to add those anchor points of zero and zero. Now what goes here? Well, look at this one. They're separated again by 10, all the way to the end. We're separated by how many? 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. So this is separated by 20. I go backwards by 20. 10,000 minus 20 is negative 10,000. Okay. Add 20 at this one, 130,000. Now I have my two anchors. Now I can quickly just create my graph, chart, columns. We're looking at frequencies, the one we're working on, we got all the information on. The row, la row labels as MSRP order by the worksheet, and points with connected lines. Compute. And that gives us our frequency polygon of the data of MSRP versus the frequency going up and down here. We see that we start at negative 10,000 at zero, and then the data actually started here. So it kind of gives you a shape of that distribution, right? So it looks a little like it's skewed a bit to the right, right? There's a tail over there. It's not quite normal. I would accept, expect it to go kind of more in the middle and between 130,000 and negative 10, right around that 60,000 mark, right? So, skewed to, the, skewed to the right a little bit. So that's how you're creating a frequency polygon when you're given data, and you could do it on any of these, and um, it's not all that bad, it just takes a little bit of time.